The trial began on October 14, 1793. The indictment was riddled with language that seemed to draw directly on the pamphlets and popular press. She was a scourge and a bloodsucker, it read, given to intrigues of every kind, disordered pleasures, excessive squandering, perfidious views. It was a show trial. She was only allowed to meet her own advocate the night before, and he wasn't allowed to do anything for her anyway. They'd already decided uh, to kill her, but she didn't know that. Never for one moment have you ceased wanting to destroy liberty. You wanted to regain the throne at any price over the bodies of patriots. We had no need to remount the throne. We were already on it. What interest do you attach to the aims of the Republic? The happiness of France is what I desire above all things. Do you think that kings are necessary to ensure the happiness of nations? An individual cannot decide such a question. You surely regret that your son has lost a throne on which he might have been seated had it not been for the uprising of the people. I shall never regret anything for my son, as long as my country is happy. She did extremely well. She was so intelligent at the trial, it really demonstrates how far she had come. Can you imagine the 14-year-old Marie Antoinette being able to score off these advocates? On trial for her life, there seemed to be only one charge Marie Antoinette had to fear. Treason. Since the revolution, you have never for a moment ceased intriguing with foreign powers against liberty. Since the revolution, I personally have forbidden myself all correspondence abroad. Il n'y avait aucune pièce prouvant sa trahison. On a depuis, on a trouvé dans les archives un certain nombre de lettres de la reine qui prouvent réellement sa trahison. Mais à l'époque, on ne le savait absolument pas. Witness followed witness, 41 in all, giving testimony that had little bearing on the case. Her intrigues with foreign powers were not the real issue. Her reputation was. She is immoral in every way, so perverted and so familiar with every crime that Forgetting her position as a mother and the line drawn by the laws of nature, she did not recoil from indulging with her son in indecencies, the mere idea and mention of which arouse a shudder of horror. They laid the most disgusting charge against her. It was so gross and it was intended to be gross. They wanted to smirch her reputation as a mother, which was very important to her, and the idea of the mother of France was very important to the country. From a declaration that the boy made, it was revealed that these two women often made him lie down between them, that there then took place acts of the most uncontrolled debauchery, that there was no doubt from what her son said that there had been an act of incest between the mother and son. Marie Antoinette and her sister-in-law were accused of molesting the queen's son. But there was no substance to the charge. The only evidence, the testimony of the little boy, a terrified eight-year-old torn from the arms of his mother and threatened and abused by his jailers. 
It's as though someone would prosecute the president, let's say, in, in an impeachment case, um, and would take, really, as a basic script, the National Enquirer. Son procès est la synthèse de ce qu'il y a dans les pamphlets à ce moment-là depuis presque une dizaine d'années. C'est-à-dire le rôle à la fois politique et sexuel de la, de la reine. C'est ça qui est l'aboutissement de l'image publique de la reine. As the prosecutor's words reverberated across a courtroom, suddenly grown deathly quiet, Marie Antoinette sat in stony silence. Until a juror asked her why she did not respond to the charge. If I have made no reply, it is because nature refuses to answer such a charge brought against her mother. I appeal in this matter to all the mothers present in the court. A wave of sympathy rippled through the room. Some of the women cried out to stop the trial. The prosecutor pressed the incest charge no further. In the court record, it was noted that the accused appeared deeply moved. The trial went on for two days and a night. When the verdict came, it was four in the morning. Marie Antoinette was sentenced to be executed at noon that same day. <laughs> 